and welcome back. This is Pink Girl Teaches and on this channel I talk about narcissistic abuse awareness as well as share tips for recovery. If it's your first time here, I want to give you a warm welcome and thank you for joining the family. If you, if anything that I say resonates with you, I invite you to click, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. And for the family that's gathering again together, welcome guys. It's great to be here with you. So as you can see, today I am talking about the reverse discard. That's right, the reverse discard, when you actually discard the narcissist. Now, before I say too much, what I do want to say is that it really doesn't matter at the end of the day who does the discard because the emotions that we feel and the things that tend to follow afterwards can often be very similar regardless of who does the discard. The ultimate goal here and the great thing that we should all celebrate is that it's over, that, you know, we're away from that crazy person like who wants to be tied to that crazy creature more than we already have so it doesn't matter again if they discarded you or if you discarded them we're all at the same place but i just want to share with you what that looks like you know how you feel and how the narcissist feels and this is mostly i'm going to talk mostly from my own experience but then i've also heard other people's experiences and i'm looking forward to hearing your experience in the comments if this is what happened with you so initially you tend to feel empowered because you found something out about the person or you witness over time that things just don't add up you know they say this they do that and then you feel like this or you start hearing rumors or they start tripping they start slipping over their own words and exposing themselves you know they say one thing and it doesn't add up with the last thing that they said so you do feel a sense of empowerment because you taking the control back of your life and so there's that sense of relief like oh, okay this is over and i did it you know and so you feel you feel like accomplished as well as strong and again in control of the situation but you know because this is a toxic abuse cycle and because trauma bonds are formed and that's done through the intimate and re reinforcements of the love bombing as well as the devaluation so we begin to experience a sense of sadness and this is because we're now in a withdrawal because like when you're with one of these creatures nothing here is normal you know you can go through a breakup with a regular person and miss them but it's really different when you with one of these succubus people um again you experience some type of isolation and you know i don't know about you but some people compare it to an actual withdrawal from an addiction from drugs but it is kind of intense you feel isolated as well as lonely and for some people who were dependent on the narcissist to some degree for financial support you know your finances may start looking funny and so you you begin to question yourself like was was this person really bad as bad as i think they were maybe i was just tripping maybe i was overreacting you know and we go back and forth back and forth and you know it, it's now because it's just so hard to grasp the sense of everything that's happened and the magnitude of the change that you're now experiencing. And it's, you know, at that point, when I was at this point, I began to just long for a sense of comfort, you know, a sense of what was. But guys, you have to remember that what was back in the love bombing days, the very first love bombing stage or phase, it was all a lie. None of it existed. And so, you know, when you're in that stage and in that moment be very careful because the narcissist always returns to the scene of the crime they will always be turning their heads like a windmill to see if you're slipping because the narc wants to catch you slipping so that they can give you that hover remember stay strong anytime that you go back to the narcissist you are going to experience a love bombing that is very intense but it's short-lived and right after that comes a painful discard and that discard i mean or the devaluation is followed by a discard and those two things have to be intense because it's always about punishing you because how dare you think that you can discard me how dare you think that you are going to end things when crazy over there thinks that they're the one in control but you know 
one thing that I want to highlight to you is, you know, like I said, it does feel like an addiction, but also consider that we know that this sucker is a demon, right? It's a, it's a Jezebel spirit. And so it's also because there's that spiritual bondage that you're in. And this is why a lot of people will experience loneliness. And if you're somebody who has experienced loneliness after narcissistic abuse, what I would say is talk to people. And, you know, you can't talk to everybody. So be very mindful of that because not everybody has experienced this type of abuse. And so when you just talk to the wrong person, they'll say things like, well, just get over it. Like, OK, and uh, people break up every day and, you know, gaslight you or make you feel bad. But they really don't understand what you've been through. And so it's oftentimes just a waste of your time, your energy, your breath speaking to that now. Again, you may not know who's experienced this before or, you know, you just want to talk. That's why I feel like these type of communities are an awesome place because we all know what's going on. We all understand the feelings. So talk, continue to talk to people in different, um, you know, in different channel comments, as well as join groups. There are several um, groups on Facebook that support victims. I know Harry Over the Top has a Facebook group. I think it's Nar Nar Anonymous, Narcissist Anonymous 101. That's an awesome community that you can you can be part of. Um, but talk about your experience. For some people, it's very therapeutic to blog, to write. So you may journal, you may blog, you may even do a vlog of your experience or even set up your own channel and build your own community. And all of this is done to support who you are. You want to get what is on the inside of you out. Those negative, painful emotions need to come out. For me, I enjoy writing. And so I wrote a lot. And I, I didn't share that stuff with anybody, but I wrote a lot. And then another thing that I did was I talked to my dad. Now, I didn't necessarily tell him all the details, but I spoke to him, you know, and he was able to pour back into me what I needed. And that's just what it is. Maybe it won't be your dad. Maybe it'll be your friend. Maybe it'll be a coworker. You know, maybe be a stranger, but get what you are feeling on the inside out. And, you know, celebrate the milestones that you make. For some people, it's going, your milestones, you know, it may be on a day by day basis. Or if you're a little stronger, it may be week by week, month by month, until you get to the point where it's year by year and you just, you know, laugh and be like, wow, I can't believe I was with that joker. But in those beginning stages, it's very difficult. So some one thing that you can celebrate is like, oh, wow, today I didn't go on his social media page or today I didn't stalk her Instagram or whatever, you know, something like that. Just continue to move forward because it really can become an obsession almost when you just keep on going to see what's happening in their life and you ask yourself well are they really that happy with this person and uh, what's wrong with me that they would be with that person first of all you're too good to be with that narc anyway in the first place let me remind you so when you're looking at the old supply I mean at the new supply or even if they recycled an ex okay but you're better than that that's why you're out here free and take a deep breath inhale exhale that is narc freedom and that's where we want to stay because we want to grow into the heavenly version of ourselves and the narc will always do whatever they can to keep you down so better them than you better her than me i'm just saying you know so another thing that you can do is plan your day you know cross things out like if i don't follow a calendar i tend not to do well especially back in the beginning i wouldn't stick to my tasks but create a positive list you know what are the good things about you what are the things that you're excited about in life but just be sure that you pour into yourself now while all this is going on with you what is going on with a crazy narc well when you discard them guess what you issue a severe narcissistic injury and it literally shatters them now, why is this? This is simply because you took control. Remember, everything with a narcissist is about power and control. And now they can't control you because you took it. And then, you know, you caused the power shift. And that's just like really, it really does them. It shatters them. And what they want to do now is silence you. And the way that they will silence you is really by 
trying to reclaim their control and they do this through the smear campaign so you've got to be really ready because they will tell anybody everybody and i mean like anything the wind the goldfish the cat the mouse whoever is listening or whatever is listening they will tell those things those people everything negative that they did to you that's what you did to them. Everything positive that you did for them, that's what they did for you. And now look how you're treating them. So the smear campaign is rough. I'm not going to lie to you. And it's, you know, so many times I wanted to jump out and say like, listen, first of all, you're lying. That isn't true. And I wanted to defend my name and my honor, but you know what? Let it be. Because that is all a plan of the narcissist. They are trying to bait you into an argument. And it could be virtual. It could be through the phone. It could be in person. All they want to do is get a reaction from you when they do that smear campaign. And so just know that whether your reaction is going to be positive or negative, none of that means anything to the narcissist. They are just desperate at this point to reclaim their... Um, their perceived control over you and so you'll find that if you do begin to talk to them they are going to beg you for another chance and this is where you see all those fake crocodile tears and they make all these proclamations on how they are going to go to therapy and then use the therapist to gaslight you because they the therapist doesn't always know about narcissist abuse and speaking of which if you are going to go to therapy, please make sure you find somebody who is well versed with narcissistic abuse so that they know what you are actually going through. Um, and that's what I found from a lot of people's experiences. They kind of got put off when they went to just a regular therapist as opposed to a specialized one. So, you know, that's something that you may want to consider. But, you know, they will really do the most. This is where they come up with that fake suicide claim. I'm going to kill myself because you don't want me and I can't see myself without you. That is a lie. They're not going to do it. Be careful because this is where they start to future fake you with a proposal. And that is just dangling a carrot in front of your nose, especially if they know this is what you want and they've been holding out while you were together. It's a lie don't believe it listen if the narcissist is talking that fool is lying and that's all you need to know you know they want to punish you and they want to discard you and listen when you when when you discard and you get sucked back into a hoover they will discard you very quickly and that is just you know i mean it's to pull the rug from under you you've gone through an intense um love bombing stage and then a very short evaluation period which might even be a day or a couple of hours and then here comes the discard as if to say ha in your face who's in control now you know so don't do it it's not even worth the pain and they this is where you also sometimes find like when you allow them to suck you back in they send their flying monkeys they send people to you know speak praises of, on your behalf or in the narcissist's behalf telling them how much the narc loves you how miserable and depressed she is without you again that's a lie and I also think it's kind of pathetic for somebody to come and send somebody else to express their feelings and this is where you get tricked because these flying monkeys may not be narcissists okay they may not be toxic people but just be genuinely duped themselves by the narcissist and so they come and they stand in front of you and they pour out their hearts with their own emotions because they have the ability to empath um, empathize and so you can connect to that and you believe them meanwhile like the narc couldn't come and put on you know couldn't express that genuineness because you know they're going to come and put on a, f a performance of a lifetime and they do this especially when they know that you know know who they are or they know that you're tired of their you know their foolishness so if again it fails and that hoover fails then just expect another smear campaign let the narcissist play victim we know that they are professional victims and they'll act like oh here's another one they will act like they wanted to discard you all along so while they're playing victim and they're telling their friends family and again the cat mouse dog whoever is listening to that fool they will say you know i always knew that she was crazy and so i wanted to break up with her but you know i was kind of worried because she tends to be suicidal or she cuts herself all lies or she was gonna go on a hunger strike or you know i just was in fear for my life because she's unstable or he's unstable they will lie. They will take that opportunity to, to flip the script and play victim and don't believe it. You know, 
and don't be bothered by it. I remember the very first smear campaign. I really wanted to stand up for myself, but something inside just said no. And I'm so glad I didn't. But I mean, like there's several smear campaigns, especially as this channel grows, they get worse. But oh, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about that. And we're not going to let the narcissist stop us from doing the things that, you know, that spark us and give us passion in life. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I hope that you found something that would give you a sense of peace or, you know, reaffirm or just assure you that you are okay. Because guess what? You really are okay. And we don't need the narcissist. We need healthy people in our lives. We need people that will uplift, inspire, and encourage us to be the best version of ourselves. So continue to treat yourself with some compassion and some kindness. And when you feel like beating yourself up because you did fall for a hover, hello, we all did. Well, not all, but many of us did. And I am one who did fall for it. But um, continue to move forward and extend some grace to yourself. This is not an easy thing, but it's also not an impossible thing to overcome. So if you find anything that I've had to say interesting, inspiring, or uplifting, I invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications, like, comment, and share. And until next time, take care of yourself and take care of each other.